Hi, and welcome to Teach Me JDE by Grant Thornton. Today, we will be discussing receipt routing. My name is Anthony Palmasano, and I'm an experienced manager at Grant Thornton. I specialize in automation, process improvement, and implementation. I am joined today by another experienced manager from Grant Thornton, Kit Land. Kit, please introduce yourself. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, my name is Kit Land. I'm an experienced manager at Grant Thornton, as Anthony said. I specialize in supply chain, transportation, and manufacturing implementations. Thank you. All right. So before we dive into a demo, I want to give you a bit of a brief introduction to receipts routing. Uh, so receipts routing, it gives you a uh, company the ability to track the movement of items as they leave the supplier's warehouse until they arrive in stock through a series of operations, uh, which you'll get to define uh, to make up your receipt route. Uh, so a lot of times the normal route you'll typically see will consist of in transit, dock, and then stock. But uh, quite frequently, you'll have uh, a random route set up for pulling out uh, inventory at random and doing some inspection tests on it, in which case you'll you'll set up your receipt route to have in transit dock inspection in stock. Um, each step of the way, you're able to disposition inventory that's in your receipt route, uh, that's replacing, repairing, scrapping, et cetera. Uh, you'll also have easy access to QA test results, adding those to any inspections that you uh, perform on the inventory you're receiving. And then you've got a ledger of any inventory movements through that. So uh, all that said, any company that has a multi-level uh, or multi-step receiving process is going to benefit from having a receipts route uh, in place. Uh, the one limitation, obviously, is that it doesn't support negative quantities. So no doing negative POs and pushing them through receipts routing. All right, so before you can start using a receipts route, you got to do some setup. Uh, and I'm not going to demo the setup to you, but we'll kind of talk through the the three major areas that you have to set up. First, you set up your uh, definitions. That's in your 43091. Uh, that's where you define the operations in your receipt route. You can have up to five operations in a route. Um, each of those operations, you get the ability to determine uh, which one of them inventory is received into stock, at which point in the operations sequence uh, the inventory becomes payable. Uh, and then you can also define a GL category code uh, to drive the GL to different accounts. Uh, the second step is setting up your supplier item information. Uh, that's your 43090. Uh, that's where you're going to define the supplier and items that are eligible to go into receipts routes. You're going to define the normal. And if you have an alternative, the alternative route. And then you're going to also determine how often to use that alternative route. Uh, the last step that you absolutely have to do is you have to update your PO receipts program at 4312. There's a processing option on there. And if you don't flip that to use receipts route, being then it's not going to go into your receipts route. Uh, there is an optional setup where you can set up the inspection and sample size. Uh, that's basically just telling the system how many pieces you want to pull out of your um, route and inspect in your inspection step. But that one's completely optional. All right. And before we get to the demo, uh, I'm going to kind of discuss the difference between a standard uh, receipt and uh, working with receipts routing. Um, so your standard receipt, you click receive in the 4312 PO receipts program, and the inventory is immediately received into your stock or into a, a location that you've marked to be um, non-sellable or non-usable or whatever. But uh, in the receipts routing, uh, typically, you receive it. It does not go into stock. It goes into an interim operation code, such as in transit, uh, dock, or inspection. Um, and then you can inquire on orders and a route uh, through the work with routing status P43250. Uh, you can move orders through that route, move them forward and backwards. So it could be in transit, move to the dock, move to inspection, move back to dock, move to stock. Uh, but none of that inventory is actually in stock until you hit that operation that you've defined as being quote, in stock. Um, you can also disposition inventory on any order that's in a route. 
So you might get the inspection, find out some of this is damaged and decide you need to replace, repair, scrap it, whatever. Uh, and receipts routing can go ahead and auto generate another line on your PO for anything that you're replacing. Uh, you can review a route ledger, which will show you all the steps, who did them, when they did them, uh, and how, the quantities they did them at. Uh, and then you can also access and edit QA test results that pertain to your inventory and your receipt route. All right, now we've done that, let's do a demo. All right, so this is your standard purchase order to receive program, your P4312. Uh, you use this to receive orders into a receipt route. So your typical process, you get your order to status 400 or whatever your receiving status is. <clears throat> uh, your supplier sends you an advanced shipping notice or you get notified by them that uh, your products in transit and you can come in here and just like any other receipt you do, you go to receive it. We receive the whole amount into our receipts route. And here's where you see some items entered receipts routing. That means this has been received. If we click find, our order has disappeared from purchase orders to receive. This inventory, the 100 units we just received into our receipts route is not in stock right now. So we'll close out of this. Uh, this is your work with receipts routing statuses. This is your P43250. I've plugged in our order number. Now I should be able to click find and we will see our order in our receipts route. It tells you it's in our first operation, which in this case is going to be in transit. Uh, and then when the inventory shows up on your dock, you have the ability to come in here. You can right click and do a movement. Uh, and you can move this to any. any operation in your receipts route. In this case, uh, dock or stock. So we'll move this to dock. All right, now if we click find, it's on our dock. Uh, if you had an inspection step, you could receive this into inspection. Um, you can also still access your QA uh, and that's what this row exit is here, where it says test results. It's going to pull up all your uh, test results that have been set up for this item. That's your search screen for it. If you close out, it'll pull out the ability to add any test results that you want. And if you had test results already set up for this item, these would, they'd appear here, and you'd be able to just quickly type in what those those test results were. Um, I, the other thing you can do uh, from this row exit, so we've moved it, uh, you can add test results. You can also disposition inventory. So if you click disposition, you have the ability to move units. Let's say 50 of these were good and we're ready to receive those into stock. Those are ready to move. Ah, uh, we need to return some, 10 were bad. Uh, we're gonna scrap 10, they were bad, we're not returning them. Uh, but the 10 maybe that we did return, perhaps we want a replacement. You can click replacement and then your processing options allow you to set up your order so that when you go to replace inventory that you're returning and your receipts are out, it will de deduct 10 units in this case from your primary line on your order, your first line that had 100 units on it and say, hey, now we're working with just 90 units on that line. It'll create a third line on your order that has um, 10 new units, and it'll put those into a the pur same purchase order number and everything uh, with the last status, next status set to be whatever it is here. And again, you can control these using processing options, something like that. If your supplier gave you an SO number, you can plug it in there. Um, We'll just save this. You can put reason codes uh, and do reporting against those if you so desire. All right. 
All right, so now looking at our, our order, we received 50 to stock, so you see where it was received to stock. We have 30 still sitting in our dock, and recall we sent 10 back, uh, we scrapped 10, and we asked for 10 more to be replaced. Uh, so if we were to come out to our uh, D4310, And drill into our order. You'll see your first line has 100 on it. <clears throat> this is us getting rid of 10. This is us asking for, for 10 new ones. Um, so this is our, this third line is now our replacement line for the 10 that we asked for back. All right. Uh, now, if you came into this order uh, blind or, you know, maybe it had been a couple days, you didn't quite remember everything had been done, you can come in, you click up, uh, can click on your routing ledger. Uh, now you can see every transaction that's been done against this. You can see that you return some. You can see that you, you scrap some. The replacement field lets you know that you're trying to replace some. Uh, these were moved. Through the system and then you can see who did it when they did it um, container ids uh, can be added um, and then uh, i don't have them turned on now but you can also turn on the ability to use lot and locations right now uh, they default to the primary and they're not editable but there's a processing option in your p43 250 that lets you uh, edit those when you go to receive them um, so this is your uh, receipts routing status in a nutshell. Again, nothing hits stock and is usable until you've moved it to the uh, stock operation. Right now, that's defined as STK. But again, when you set up your receipts route, you can define any of these operations as being your, your stock operation. All right. In summary, uh, so receipts routing is a great means for tracking inventory as it moves from your supplier warehouse to your warehouse. That's your in-transit step. It's a great tool for moving and dispositioning inventory if you have multiple operations in a uh, multi-step receipts process, docking, staging, inspection, uh, et cetera. Uh, it's quick and easy to access, to add, inquire, edit QA test results prior to receiving inventory into stock. Uh, and you can also easily use it to automatically generate replacement purchase orders based on your disposition. Uh, so anytime you have a multi-step receipt process, this is a tool you need to look into.